Emily Carr's Gleewick, Chapter 10, Two Bits and a Wheelbarrow. The smallest coin we had in Canada in early days was a dime, worth 10 cents. The Indians called this coin a bit. Our next coin, double in buying power and in size, was a 25 cent piece, and this the Indians called two bits. Two bits was the top price that old Jenny knew. She asked two bits for everything she had to sell, were it canoe baler, eagle's wing, cedar bark basket, or woven mat. She priced each at two bits. And if I had said, how much for your husband or your cat? She would have answered two bits, just the same. Her old husband did not look worth two bits. He was blind and very moth-eaten. All day he lay upon a heap of rags in the corner of their hut. He was quite blind, but he had some strength still. Jenny made him lie there except when he was led, because he fell into the fire or into the big iron cook pot and burned himself if he went alone. There was such a litter over the floor that he could not help tripping on something if he took even a step. So Jenny Two Bits ordered her old blind Tom to stay in his corner till she was ready. Jenny was getting feeble. She was lame in the hip and walked with a crooked stick that she had pulled from the sea. Tommy knew that day had come when he felt Jenny Two Bits stick stab him. The stick stayed in the jab until Tom took hold. Then, Still holding the stick, Jenny steered him across to where she lay. When he came close, she pulled herself up by hanging on to his clothes. When bits of his old rags tore off in her hands and she scolded Tom bitterly for having such poor, weak clothes. Tom could tell by the cold, clammy feel how very new the morning was when Jenny pushed him out of the door and told him to stand by the wall and not move while she went for the wheelbarrow. It screeched down the alley. Jenny backed Tom between the handles and he took hold of them. Then she tied a rope to each of his arms above the elbow. She used the ropes for reins and hobbled along, slapping the barrow with her stick to make Tom go and poking her stick into his back to make him stop. At that early hour, the village was empty. They always tried to be the first on the beach so that they could have a pick of what the sea had thrown up. They went slowly to the far end of the village street to where the bank was low, and here they left the barrow. Jenny Two Bits led Tom along the quiet shore. She peered this way and that to see what the waves had brought in. Sometimes the sea gave him good things, Sometimes, nothing at all. But there were always bits of firewood and bark to be had if they got there before anybody else. The old woman's eyes were very sharp and the wheelbarrow hardly ever came back empty. When Jenny found anything worthwhile, first she peered, then she beat it with her stick and took Tom's hand and laid it on the wet cast up thing. Tom would lift it and carry it to the barrow. Then they came back to their shanty and step, sat down in the sun outside the door to rest. Sometimes Jenny and Tom went in a canoe to fish out in the bay. Tom held the lines and Jenny paddled. When they caught a fish or when Jenny sold something for two bits or when they sat together baking themselves in the sunshine, they were happy enough.